all. With liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in the last week, particularly Ira Joseph Fenton, beloved husband, father of my dear friend Wayne, grandfather, great-grandfather, and uncle, Gina Lynn Chulo, loving daughter of my friends Judy and Carmen, niece and cousin, Joseph F. Faherty, devoted husband, brother, uncle of former state representative Ken Smith, and World War II Army veteran, Rudolph J. Intosha, beloved father of a former colleague Marie, grandfather, great-grandfather, brother, and proud Army veteran, and their dear families and many friends who suffer their loss. Also, please remember in your prayers Perry Brunori, our friend and chief of maintenance at Scranton City Hall, who underwent surgery this week. We miss seeing him each Thursday evening. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loskin? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A. Minutes of the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority's regular meeting held November 15, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, Minutes of the Composite Pension Board Meeting, held December 12, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Meeting, held on December 12, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, Tax Assessor's Report, Hearing Results held on January 9, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you, Mrs. Craig. Do any council members have announcements at this time? I have scheduled a caucus on Thursday, February 7, 2013 at 5.15 p.m. with Mr. Romy Valera of Standard Parking Corporation in order to provide an overview of the parking meter program and to respond to questions or concerns of council members. The Fraternal Order of Eagles, number 314 in Scranton, will conduct its fifth annual Chili Fest this Saturday, February 2nd, from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. Proceeds benefit Stacy Smith, who is battling cancer. All-you-can-eat tickets are only $8 and include music prizes and fun for everyone. For additional information, call the Eagles Club at 570-961-5495. And remember, as they say at the Eagles Club, it's never too chilly for chili. And that's it. <coughs> May I say thank you, Mrs. Evans, for arranging that caucus with Central Parking. I know that uh, there was some problems with it uh, last week when we talked about it, but uh, I think that, that will be beneficial to not only council, but to the public in general. So thank you very much. And you're very welcome. Fourth order, citizens participation. Our first speaker tonight is Ron Elman. Hello, my council friends. I guess we're still on speaking terms. 
Good evening. Absolutely. Good evening. Good evening. My cat didn't like what I wrote tonight, so I had to explain to him one more episode like this, and he's on his way back to J.C. Penney's. You know, I, I was very glad to see some new faces entering our local politics. Uh, I, mean, I mean this really, but I don't think the mayor's office is, is made for on-the-job training. We've had about 10 years of on-the-job training and it failed. I, uh, I, I'm not trying to discourage somebody in the least bit, but it's, it's like starting as president of a company or something to me. I, I think to, to be the mayor, you should maybe have a, a degree in political science. If not, I think you, you need a strong Uh, administration, an intelligent administration, and certainly uh, <clears throat> Mr. Doherty failed in that. And so lastly, I think the most important thing is to have common sense. It, I won't emphasize uh, uh, <laughs> my common sense statement. But I, I, I read in the paper someone that's had a half dozen jobs and worked for the University of Scranton for seven years <coughs> I, 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 on the resume, that's not an asset to me. I think your allegiance would be to the university and not the people of this city. Uh, the university has supported the mayor these many years, and I think that's what, that's all that would happen if, if, uh, if I had an association with someone all those years. Last week, I'm going to drop that before I get somebody offended. Last week, I, I, I mentioned to please see if you could terminate the use of the swimming pool slide. I didn't say nothing about closing pools, and several people were mad that I'm trying to close the pools. The mayor closing the pools. I work with the Taxpayers Association that did everything to try to have young people swimming it and paid for swimming. I just asked for a qualified legal inspection of the slide. You know, I don't, I don't want I don't want any pools closed. Uh, 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 you know, not in the least bit. And <laughs> last week, across the street from my house, a pipe broke. The gas company come over there and fixed it. You know, I was watching them. And this week, a sewer pipe broke across the street and I watched them for two days. And as a somewhat critic of these two, the, the sewer authority, I'd like to say I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe how organized, and, and I mean this, I'm not joking, they were so well organized and professional, I couldn't believe it. You know, I, I don't think they were doing it because I was watching them. But, there wasn't six or eight guys leaning on shovels watching one work and they weren't in trucks getting warm. Everybody was working and had a job to do on both occasions. It, it greatly surprised me. Uh, I think that makes me take back some of, some of the things I've said in the past. And one thing before I go, I was just wondering if the mayor's going to have a garage sale before he leaves, there's still some parks and fire trucks and things he can sell. But as you know, I'd like to try to get the two false staffs at the end of the, the, 
the stairs down there. Thank they you. They remind me of my my boyhood when we in, in Memphis when they had Falstaff beer and I was 12, 13 years old and used to go down to get some. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Andy Sprague. I almost made it, didn't I? <laughs> <clears throat> Andy Spraglia, Citizens of Grant and Fellows of Grantonians. <clears throat> you heard me speak many times about the mayor's plans to sell an asset and buy it back. You heard me call him a flim flam man, which he is. And I hope you're not going to be a flim flam consul. You have to tell me, how do you figure that it's going to be cheaper on the citizens of Scranton? to have the SRA buy a property and then sell it than the people of Scranton selling the property themselves or borrowing themselves. You and I know that the police complex was mentioned, whether that will be or not, I don't know. But it was only about 17 million to build. And you plan to, in fact, it's not even paid for, as you know and I know and everyone else knows. But yet, he comes up with these grandiose plans. We followed him down the street to a dead end, where Scranton is now. We're at a dead end. To keep oppressing the people of Scranton, what you're going to have to do is self-defeating. Uh, a little on that uh, parking meter, of course you could have to do it, but I don't understand why you would want to go to 8 o'clock at night or six days a week, whatever. That's going to require more people anyway to run. But the directions ain't there. I don't see a light in what you're doing. And I really don't understand that we would have been better off had you filed for bankruptcy or not. As far as I can see, the only people that would suffer more would be the public employees. The people probably would have got a break. But we're heading down a trail we cannot go. We cannot survive. And you can shake your head all you want, Janet. We're heading that way. We're going to get a, end up with a 100% tax increase by the time the next four years are over. You and I know both know it. A lot of these grandest plans ain't going to work out. People ain't going to come to Scranton. You're going to drive more business away than you bring in. Our problem is to bring people in or bring companies in. Your plan all your plans to help the small businessmen are fine, but you're going to drive away the big ratepayers. Vasco left, and you ain't going to tell me it wasn't that he needed more room. He just didn't like to pay them high taxes, which I don't blame him. No one wants to pay what we're doing, and there's no way out of it. I know you're stuck with it. I told you that when you got there almost what, three years ago, coming up on four now, what was going to happen? The figures were all on the wall then, and they're not any better now. In fact, we have gotten worse. Never did we have to go out and get the, a judge to give us, the, uh, to borrow money to pay off bad debts, which the city had many bad debts. And we continue to have many bad debts. All your grandiose plans aren't going to phase out. They're just not going to work. People are like me. They're stubborn. We live in a place where we're very stubborn and very opinionated. And we're not going to stand by to see people really have to pay a lot of money for so little service. I told you a long time ago you should have raised the mayor's salary. Not come up now. You should have done it five years ago, even ten years ago. I told you before, you get what you pay for. And that's what we got, lots of debt, but very little progress. Progress is not words. Progress is deeds. And this city has lacked deeds for a long, long time. Everywhere you look, you see problems. And you're not going to correct them problems without massive increases in taxes. When I said go down to Harrisburg, like the mayor did, when he wanted to sell the Southside Complex, he went down to Harrisburg. How many of you went down to Harrisburg and asked them to work on that bill where 
the taxes would come out for the school board from increase in wage tax and increase in uh, sales tax. How many of you went down there and asked your legislature to do it? Mr. Spragley, I was actually planning on speaking on that issue tonight. Yeah, I figured you were, Mr. Rogan. <laughs> I understand that. But there's where we stand. That's your solution. All these other solutions are just going to drive people away. Do you remember when they used to have satellite parking outside the city? And they would bring the buses and bring the people into the city with satellite parking? Well, they had it. And I think it's coming again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bob Bolas. Good evening, Council. Bob Bolas, Scranton. Good, Good evening. evening. First off, I would like to uh, say I was rather disappointed last week when Attorney Moses and I got here. We were a little late and we both have extremely busy schedules. We got here prior to going into motions. I held up the agenda and waved it back and forth. It was looked at by members of council and we were totally ignored. Um, Mr. I, Mr. I don't want to give up my time, Mrs. Evans. Please well, explain to me later, if you would, please. Done. We went through a lot of time and energy to be here to explain to council regarding the potential lawsuit that was going to be filed if we couldn't get an answer. You know, I understand the rules and we look at it, but yet we wanted to speak before you got into the agenda. And we were denied that. And uh, we were quite disappointed. I felt it was very unprofessional. Well, we filed a lawsuit now, and we will get the answers that we've asked counsel for to get from Paul Kelly. Paul Kelly will now be held accountable. He will give the truth, he will give the answer, and he will tell us who owns the 16 and a half foot piece of land up on East Mount, whether it's owned by the city or whoever, and what happened to it and what transpired to it. There is a $50,000 offer out there that's been ignored by the city when they're paying minimum wages to employees. So now we're going to get answers, and unfortunately it's going to cost us all money for absolutely no reason because Paul Kelly couldn't do his job, yet you want to give him a backdoor raise and pay him more money to go do extra work and it's ridiculous. <clears throat> on the fle legal fees, I requested a fee agreement. I have not seen one yet or have been sent to me by either Mr. Hughes or Mr. Kelly. Anybody hires an attorney, you get a fee agreement. And I have numerous attorneys that work for me all over the country. And nothing's done until I have a fee agreement and know what we're paying and what we're paying for. But in this city, it's business as usual. Sitting council members, and we heard, and Boyd, this is not personal one way or the other, but we've heard that Boyd's the only one that could do the work that had to be done. That's why all this additional money is being paid. But I've seen councils here. Bob McGough sat as council president. Bill Courtright's been here. Kevin Murphy, Azuri, Poches, Gary DeBilio, Chris Doherty. I never heard anybody say that their council solicitor was incompetent or incapable of doing the work Mr. Hughes did. And I think that warrants some serious explanation to the legal people that represent a lot of people in this city, that we're paying extra money for people who could do the same job. A mayor's salary, I agree, it should go to 80000 There's no question. When you're taking on the responsibility what this town is and what this city is, you definitely need it. On the bridge in Scranton, I'm going to read this, and I submitted this letter to council and asked for the question. This is sent to Scranton City Council. As per article in today's Scranton Times, the Scranton Police Department is still investigating the Moosley Street Bridge incident, which is three months or better old. Since the city of Scranton has been involved in the Moosley Street Bridge incident, and that payment in excess of $20,000 has been paid to Boots and Hanks Towing Service in Scranton for the removal and storage of the excavator involved in this non-reportable accident. My questions are, did the city pay this amount? If so, who authorized payment? If not, what agency paid Boots and Hanks on behalf of the city police department? They have permission to leave the machine on our property after we're given insurance information and everything else they needed. That evening, in the middle of the night, 
They came in with a search warrant to remove the machine. They choose to remove it and incurred this expense in excess of 20000 Who was responsible for the environmental cleanup costs ordered by the DEP in the amount in excess of 7000 caused by the City of Scranton and Boots and Hanks towing during the removal of this machine from our Dunmore property? I would request not only did I send it in writing, I would request that I receive this response from whatever department or whoever paid this and uh, allowed this to take place at whose expense it was. Our insurance company didn't pay it. Our engineers have stated the bridge could have been repaired. We paid for it and reopened. PennDOT, who owns the bridge, not the city, has elected to replace the bridge. This bridge is almost worn out. It's been compromised in the past by other accidents and been hit. Our insurance company's involved. They'll deal with it as they have to deal with it. But for people to pay in excess of $20,000 at taxpayers or somebody's expense to remove this machine, I think is an absurdity. And I think it's council's responsibility to find out who did this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Thank you. <clears throat> Before I call up the next speaker, I just want to respond to some of the um, incorrect allegations that were just made. Uh, first of all, Mr. Bolas, you were denied nothing last week. Uh, I called your name. I called the name of Attorney Moses during citizens' participation. Neither of you were present, and so I continued with the sign-in sheet. When that was exhausted, I asked if there was anyone who cared to address City Council. There were no individuals who responded. Uh, yes, no, you're saying, ex Mr. Mr. Bullock, I'm speaking now. I listen to you. Now, please show a reciprocity of respect. Now, we began motions. In fact, I believe, I can't even recall which council member was um, presenting his motions at the time you came in. So you arrived well past the deadline of citizens' participation that evening, unfortunately. Now, if you're asking that we should have stopped a meeting in progress to accommodate you, I don't believe that exceptions like that should be made. Um, now, in addition to the prior solicitors that have served City Council, no former solicitor ever did this type of work. They were never asked to do this type of work by any previous council because I think you and many of the audience members can recall those council members that uh, you enumerated were often very busy approving the mayor's financial agenda, such as uh, parking garages, unnecessary borrowing, his an annual budgets. So the only questioning that was ever issued from this desk came from me. The only one offering any alternatives to what was ongoing all those years was Janet Evans. And so to say that council is disparaging or to infer that we're disparaging any other solicitor is absolutely untrue. But let's tell the truth. These responsibilities were never asked of any other, any other solicitor. And in addition to that, why? The city was not teetering on the edge of bankruptcy either during those years. The actions that were taken were the actions that led up to what happened in 2012. And they needed to be addressed. And sadly, I know there are those who think bankruptcy would have been the answer because our problems do seem insurmountable. But what they seem to be unable to understand is that bankruptcy isn't the easy out. 
Bankruptcy appoints a receiver. The state appoints a receiver. The primary obligation of that receiver is to repay the debts of the city of Scranton. That means bonds, banks. It is not their primary responsibility to take care of all of you. So what would happen is, in order to make those payments back to the people that are their priorities, your taxes really would go through the roof. You're not going to walk away unscathed through a bankruptcy. They will be exceedingly high, and there will be no one, no elected official, who will have any authority to change that. And in addition, they will, in an attempt to save money, decimate your police department, your fire department, your DPW. So if citizens are anxious to stand guard on their homes in their own blocks and hope that we never have more than one fire at one time and be willing to pay 100% or more to get service like that, then I say go for bankruptcy. Go for it. But what I've been trying to do is save this city. I think you're and uh, excuse me, you're, Mr. Bullis, your time, thank you. Yeah, I know my time is up. Right? That's right. I will address it next week. Well, we all, and we all appreciate that very much. Now, I think it's important to remember, if you did not have this council seated here, you wouldn't have had a 22% tax increase. That's very true. Very, very true. Instead, you would have had an 81% tax increase. 81, 22. And if Pell single-handedly directed the city, it would have been, I believe, I don't know, Mrs. Craig, I might need your correction. I don't recall now whether it was 126 or 134. That's what they're looking for. And this is all that stood between those things happening. So ladies and gentlemen, you decide for yourselves what's the correct direction for this city. And you consider the facts. And what would you rather have had? Our next speaker is Doug Miller. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. It actually is Mr. Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, well, I think the first thing I'll say here is, um, President Evans, um, your opinions are fine, but um, you're not a judge, and uh, you haven't heard a bankruptcy case presented by the city, and you don't have the ability to reach a determination. Only a judge can, and any attorney can have any opinion they want, but a judge makes decisions based on law and no one else. Now, with that said, I've been trying very to, hard. I just want to inject very quickly. Well, though. I hope you wait. That was not the case in Harrisburg. When I, I'm not, look, I don't, want to, I don't want to get stuck in some kind of spinning thing that's going nowhere. Because it's not a spinning thing. It is. It's, it's spinning fact. absolutely nowhere because this city is so downtrodden by the political spaghetti dinner politicians we've had for decades that when, when you sit there as a councilwoman and make the statements you just made, I just think it's very disrespectful, and I think that you should make your comments to people when they're standing here so they can respond. But with that said, you know, I've done requests to council on um, Section 213, I mean 313 and 312 of the Home Rule Charter. I received one subpoena, allegedly, from 2005, but I'm looking for a letter from council, and that's what I've asked for, stating whether any record exists or not, and a copy of all subpoenas and this is what I was given. And the other thing is, recently I asked for a, a record of all city council votes from 1976 until January 1st, 20, I mean 2013. 
And what I'd like to do is I'd like to come here and scan these documents and load them into my own computer. I'm not interested in paying $300 for those documents. I want to come here, scan them, and own them, or I want the city to put them on a website so that I can have access to them. Because I think, as a resident, I should have a right to them. And I can't, I can't understand why I can't just load them electronically. Because my opinion is much different than this council's. I believe there's been a lot of mistakes made. And rolling your eyes, Mrs. Evans, I think you should put your name on the ballot again. And I think you should allow the residents to make the determination on whether you should serve anymore. And that's not disrespectful to you. You know, so many people are just so fed up. You know, that's why starting on, I'm going to start collecting signatures and I'm going to run for mayor in the next election. I am just so disgusted with where the city is and we can all smile. But you know, working people have come up to me and said, a guy came up to me today and said, you know, I earn $23,000 a year. I work a full-time job and a part-time job. Council forced the parking authority into receivership. They're borrowing tons of money. They're going to borrow money to pay the employees at a higher percentage rate than if they just put it in the budget and paid them at the 6% rate. I think there is such a disconnect in city government. You know, when you sit there and you listen to Judge Nealon say, he's a judge, why aren't we doing a bankruptcy petition here? A judge asked that. I mean, and we keep coming back to the same taxpayers and telling them that we need more of your money. And you know, when you talk about the 22% tax increase this year, it didn't close any of the budget shortfall, not one drop of it. Okay? And that came up. I mean, so how can this council honestly come to the residents of this city and tell them that this council is doing anything for them? All the neighborhood pools are closed. The council decided that SAPA was a bad idea for the city, came up with no plan. You know, Mr. Rogan, with all respect to you, you voted no on things, but I didn't hear any plan from you either. And I just think the residents of this city have a right to a council that has some idea what reality is and votes in reality, okay? Because the truth is, I agree with Andy. There's not going to be anybody living in this city because we've got a lot of people running around with suits and nice clothes who make incompetent decisions, okay, and then say to the voters, wait a minute, we can't pay our bills, so look, just give us more money. Look at what Mr. Corbett wants to do, the governor. He wants to get rid of the lottery. He wants to sell the liquor stores. Now, why don't we just take all the revenue from the liquor stores and plug it into education instead of selling them? And I know, Mrs. Evans, you have a lot to say, so do you want to say why I'm standing here, or do you want to wait until I leave? Well, actually, I, I will now that you've given me permission. Well, I'd love to have the opportunity Thank to respond. Thank you so much for your permission. Um, first of all, please don't make false statements. I was not rolling my eyes at you, nor have I ever. I was looking at you. Well, not I well. Think I think well, doesn't I doesn't come know into that with all due respect, that. Mrs. Evans. So, when I have a line of vision and I'm looking at you and you roll your eyes, I'm, I'm saying you're just disingenuous. If you, if you would like to have a discussion... I'm trying to do that, no, but you're, you're being very deceitful with your comments, because if you can't acknowledge that you rolled your eyes, Mr. I'm looking right at you. Ex listen, Go ahead. I'm looking right at you. You're right. You didn't I see did me roll my eyes roll because my I'm not disrespectful. Eyes. Mr. Bolas further asked me not to... I'm not to, talking about Mr. Bolas. Mr. Bolas, Bolas uh, I'm responding to okay. your comments. Mr. Bolas asked me not to respond and use his time until he had finished. Mm -hmm. And unlike Mr. Bolas, you seem to want the responses while you're speaking, well, which means the time will be taken from you, but... Well, that's fine, but you know I something? Tried, I've come here many... I now, tried, wait a minute. Excuse me, I have I, not finished. Go ahead. I tried to respond to you during your time, mm -hmm. but it's quite clear that you're undeterred by facts and unmoved by the truth. No, the facts are that, as many people have seen here from the podium many times, I've left the podium if you've made comments or you wait for motions to make comments. Because, Mrs. Evans, to be quite honest, okay, you as council president or councilman general can do what you perceive to be right. But you know something? Making comments when somebody leaves the podium is extremely disrespectful. And you Thank did you. roll your eyes. And you know no. what I'm saying, Mrs. Evans? Put your name on the ballot, please. Mr. Mr. Morgan? Don't waste your breath because Perhaps. I can't respond. Oh, I'm sure. 
But perhaps it would be nice if you remained during the meetings. When you ask so many questions, you're often seen fleeing out the door before you can ever receive a response. Uh, is there anyone else who cares to address council? Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Good evening. Um, I, you know, I just have to address some of the uh, statements that were made tonight. Uh, you know, again, we're, we seem to want to go back to this bankruptcy thing again, and I just, uh, you know, like beating your head off a wall here. I, I just can't simply understand uh, why the residents of the city can't understand the concept that bankruptcy is not the answer. I mean, I, I don't understand how many lessons and, and education courses we have to go through on this. You know, we saw what transpired over the summer that if decisions weren't made and if the, the council and the administration didn't come together, we would have had to have filed for bankruptcy. But we know what bankruptcy does. Look at Harrisburg. I mean, it's not complex. A receiver comes in and the taxes go through the roof. It'll be obscene. And somebody that's 23 years old, I don't want to be stuck with paying what I already have to be paid, what I'm already stuck with. And that's what would happen if the taxes went up 123%. I'm looking out for myself and the next generation, and I'm asking myself, do I want to be left with an additional mess on top of what's already been left for me? No. And that's what happens when, you're, when you go for bankruptcy. You lose your services. You think things are bad now with a police and firemen. Well, let's, raise, let, let's go for bankruptcy then. And when your house catches on fire, let's see what's left. Because let me tell you, you better run and hope you don't have anything that valuable in there because you're not going to save it. You know, you, you get mugged on the street, well, you better hope there's a cop in sight because with bankruptcy, you're not going to have one. Or if you have the chief get you, you better hope there's somebody on standby that he can call to come in and help you. So that's what bankruptcy does. It's not the solution. I've said it before, and I'll continue saying it. And I, I just get frustrated with hearing it, because we think bankruptcy is the solution to everything, that it's going to solve all of our problems. It's going to just, just come in with an eraser and just wipe everything out. It's not that simple, believe me. I've looked at it. I've listened to counsel. I've listened to people, and I know it's not the solution. We've had people in here in the past who've been making money off coming in here to try to get the city to file bankruptcy. So it's not the solution. And I'm just tired of talking about it. Uh, <clears throat> moving on, I'm glad to see that we will uh, conduct a caucus next week uh, with standard parking. Uh, to answer any questions that people do have, I'm certainly looking forward to having them come in in a public setting. Uh, and I'm glad that uh, the council president, Evans, was able to put that together uh, with the request of uh, Councilman McGough. Uh, in regards to the agenda tonight, 5C, the increase uh, to the mayor, uh, I have a different opinion than some people that spoke tonight. Uh, do I believe the salary of the mayor is, is, uh, is low uh, for, the, for the duties that he does have to take on? Uh, I do. Do I think it should be increased? I do. But do I think a $30,000 increase at this time is appropriate? Um, I, I don't. I think that rather than uh, considering a $30,000 increase at, at, at one shot, perhaps we should consider a gradual increase. I think that may be the uh, more appropriate avenue to take uh, due to our current financial restraints and, and having the uh, inability to you know, make, pay, pay, make payroll uh, as is, uh, going back to the summer again where we had employees making minimum wage. Uh, you know, we just, the bottom line is we struggle to pay our bills. And going and approving a $30,000 increase in the mayor's salary in one shot I just don't feel is, uh, is in our interest at this time. Uh, again, it doesn't mean that I don't feel the salary should be increased because I do think it should. Uh, but I think maybe we should consider a gradual increase, uh, you know, rather than just simply saying no. I know some of us have uh, a history of just liking to say no and move on and, and not consider, consider other options. Uh, there are other options out there, and one of them is a gradual increase. And I look forward to uh, hearing uh, some of our council members' opinions on that later on uh, when we go, go into the agenda. Uh, in regards to the $500,000 that the city was rewarded uh, as our share of the casino revenue, uh, we've been made aware that that will be used for paving and street repair. Um, my question to council tonight is, do we have an idea of where the city plans on using that money? What streets uh, do we intend on repairing? Uh, will we be going by the 2013 uh, street, laving, street paving list that was already approved by council, or will this money go into other, uh, other repairs? And maybe we can get an answer to that later on in motions. Uh, finally tonight, uh, in regards to the dirt testing that was conducted on council's request, off of Lake Grant Road. Uh, we certainly know the issues that the residents uh, have, have dealt with up there in the last few months. 
Uh, we understand DEP, DEP did conduct a visual study and made the determination that there was no contamination in the dirt. My only question would be is, uh, maybe this is a gift I wish I had. I just don't understand how you can look at dirt and visually make a determination that it's not contaminated. I, I don't know if they're, they're like Superman and have some type of vision that you know, we weren't all born with. But I just don't think they abided by council's uh, request. And I think we should send another letter to them and tell them to come in. And we want, we want a, a testing done where samples are taken so that we have a factual determination as to whether or not that dirt is contaminated or not. Simply looking at something, like I said, I, I don't know what gift they were born with, but I don't see how you can make that determination by looking at it. Thank this has de been a detriment to the health, safety, and well-being of those residents, and they should have this uh, issue resolved once and for all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there anyone Thank else you. who cares to address council? Good evening, council. Dave Dobson, resident of Trenton. Uh, I have a couple of uh, newspaper trimmings and stuff I'd like for people to look over. Uh, this one is This one I'll speak on and then hand it over. And this is on taxes. Uh, uh, I don't know if you get the paper <laughs> because I could imagine you really don't want to look at it. Some of the nasty things that get said. But here we have uh, Clear Book CEO defends high pay. He was $2.5 million. Now this is Clearbrook isn't in our town, but previously I have spoken on profitable nonprofits. And I think it needs to be examined all throughout the state uh, how much compensation some of the honchos in the top of these organizations are getting. Because it's obvious, it's a very profitable nonprofit. I'll give this to uh, Kathy. To look at and mull through it later. And uh, it's, it's ungodly that somebody's worked two and a half million dollars working for a nonprofit drug rehab. Uh, it's in another town, but my question is how many nonprofits or alleged nonprofits do we have in this town where somebody's raking two or three million dollars every couple of years and calling it a nonprofit? And they can't give us a hundred and fifty thousand or two hundred thousand uh, pilot, which is probably five percent of what the property is worth if it were private. And uh, there's been talk about a sales tax, and personally, I feel that the county is looking to get a good portion of that for themselves, and. I'd like to just point out, I realize that we have a lot of ends we have to meet. So uh, as far as the tax uh, increases and so forth, I realize that they've been necessary. But uh, the poor pay that. The people that are homeless would pay that on certain items. So, you know, it's just like I can't understand or, or can't believe that uh, uh, somebody has very much to be thankful about if they're homeless in our society. Uh, on Mr. Hughes, I would say that the competency of the current people or, or past people that have done these things was uh, questionable, so that's why we need to pay him a couple extra pennies. And that's all there is to it. Uh, if we let the other guy do it, who knows what it's going to turn into. Now, on this bankruptcy business, I, I, I'm also tired of hearing it. I don't know if you realize that once you file bankruptcy, you're in other states, they actually come in and tell you you're bankrupt in Michigan. And the only thing you people would be allowed to do is to su salute the flag and make announcements about what church has a social. So I don't know what Pennsylvania has in store for us, but to me that is handing it over to the same fancy pants thieves that have put us where we're at now, the state. 
They want us to pay for everybody else, a free ride. And uh, on elections, a little advice, try and get your names out there as soon as you can, please. This, I support this council. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I'll tell you how I vote each and every time. I worked seven out of the last nine days for Obama, and I'm far to the left of him. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, I'd like to point out with the DPW, I talked to a small store owner, and he's paying $700 a year. So now if we start cutting back on these services, I don't need people throwing garbage on my lawn. I've had tires thrown on. I have a little semi-wooded lot next door to my house that I purchased. I pay taxes, pretty high taxes on it. And uh, then every now and then there's a tire deposited there. Well, I have to go beg some tire shop to take that and pay five bucks out of my pocket. Thank you. Know? you. And uh, finally, I'll make it quick. Uh, uh, Bernie Frank was turned down by the governor of Massachusetts. He could have filled Cary's seat. So the governor of Massachusetts gets uh, the bok bok. And uh, Mayor Chellick from, he had, said he had, had us surrounded. I, I couldn't find that newspaper. And uh, I mean, Mayor Chellick, uh, you get a triple bok bok. Thanks, thanks a lot, you freeloader. And uh, on the voting situation, they're looking to uh, turn and, and Pennsylvania is one away from the Electoral College and make it a district. And if they had done that and the states uh, prescribed, although it was like a six point difference between Obama and Romney, Romney would have won. Thank you. Have a good night. And don't forget Thank to bok, bok, bok. <clears throat> Good evening, Council. Gregory Evans. Good evening. Good evening. Resident of Scranton, small business owner in Scranton. Um, I want to start by, by thanking you for, for having the caucus next week. Um, I think anything regarding the Scranton Parking Authority is a sensitive topic for anybody who pays taxes here in Scranton, and, so, and also even for the, the downtown business owners. So thank you for that. And um, I do have a question, though, regarding that, because I, I, I came in late. Will, the, will there be um, an opportunity for citizens part participation in that caucus, or is it just the, the council asking questions? It is, it is for um, standard parking to provide us with an overview, and then uh, those representatives will take questions and concerns from city council members. However, I'm sure when the caucus concludes, if you would like to uh, speak with them, I, I would think they'd be more than happy to. In addition to that, if you have any specific questions or concerns, if you would like to forward them to council, we'd be happy to pose the questions for you. Okay, thank you. And um, the other th item I wanted to speak about, and, and it's a hot topic, is, is the, the increase. And I think most people believe that you know the mayor is underpaid. Um, the, the role of the mayor is underpaid, I should say, um, regardless of your opinion on the mayor. Um, but I had a thought, you know, or an idea, and everything starts with an idea. And, you know, the University of Scranton's a hot topic with the pilots. And this is more of a question than an idea, but has there ever been any um, effort to reach out to the University of Scranton to maybe touch base with the Department of Economics and utilize their expertise to help with the recovery plan? Um, actually, I believe um, there were interns working in the BA's office in 2012. There wasn't. Or there were. Yes. Okay. So they were involved. I, I'm thinking of more than interns. I'm thinking of actual professors and people who, you know, the educators versus the students. Mm -hmm. who might be a little more enlightened into, you know, the role of economics in, 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 in this society. Um, because I know with the pilot issues, you know, what, what better return would that be if they were actually able to help us with the recovery versus just, you know, monetary payment? Just a thought. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else?
Good evening, Council. Marie evening. Schumacher, city resident and taxpayer. Good evening. Uh, it pains me that this year we may be shipping $120,000 in management fees and another $306,800 in commissions to Chicago that could have stayed in Scranton and helped to make Scranton Parking Authority debt payments, which now will fall to us employee uh, taxpayers. And for what? So our receiver is able to make $100 an hour and the city will receive more citation revenue that could have been achieved under prior management with new meters. Meters for which we'll pay $414,600 for and another $53,700 for two automobiles, though you were incensed the Scranton Parking Authority director was provided a vehicle. None of this really makes a lot of sense to me, as it appears the city is paying all the bills and absorbing all the risk, while the provider is reaping all the benefits. But on to my comments. First, we are putting the cart before the horse. File of Council 100 of 2009 defines the placement of meters, the days of operation, the hours of operation, the maximum time a vehicle may remain at a meter, the cost per hour or minute, and perhaps other ground rules, but this document is no longer available online as the Scranton Parking Authority's website is no longer available. Uh, this document forms the basis for this entire operation and should be amended prior to a final vote on the standard parking agreement. Now I notice it is on the on the ballot or on the on the agenda tonight, and I have some concerns for the um, the people who are in the downtown and trying to uh, have viable businesses that you are going to extend the days of the week through Saturday and the hours of operation until eight o'clock at night. Um, you know. I thought the city, the downtown was starting to come back, but I, it looks as though we're trying to do everything we possibly can to kill it. Um, now, one second. Mm -hmm. One minute. I'm sorry. Some of the other questions I have, though, was it was a business impact study conducted on any of this, and why? And as a, a consumer, I know recently, as you mentioned, Standard uh, Parking bought central parking. And the U.S. Justice Department required Standard to sell 107 parking facilities in Chicago and 28 other cities to obtain approval to buy their rival parking, a central parking. As federal antitrust authorities said that the combined company would have gained a dominant market share in certain areas of each of the cities that would have resulted in a higher parking fees. From a parking consumer standpoint, having the same company managing both the parking garages and the parking meters is the worst thing that could happen. Consumers would be better served with competition between the meters and the garage. And now on to the agreement itself, which starts with, I am convinced, a fabrication. Only a copy of the Scranton Times Tribune legal notice soliciting bids for the management and administration of the city's on-street parking meter operation, including enforcement and citation collection services. I don't believe ever, uh, I read them all the time, I and I don't ever remember seeing it. All I ever remember seeing was a demonstration program for the downtown for an enhanced parking system. And those were, um, I don't know whatever happened to them, they died on the vine. And I'm surprised anybody even bid the second time around. Making a bid is not exactly inexpensive either. Um, one generic flaw that is reported throughout the agreement is the use of the word city. For example, uh, in paragraph four, I believe it stated, operating expenses shall also include any, uh, any operating expenses not in listed above that are approved by the city prior to expenditure. 
Who is the city? This needs to be clear. Is it the BA or city council or the mayor or some other entity? This is an item that should come before council and city just doesn't do it for me. I'll be back next week, good Lord willing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, City Council. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Tom Lungvarsky. Why is it whenever the City of Scranton enters into an agreement, we always seem to come out second best? It seems like the City of Scranton is always the guarantor instead of the guarantee. Anytime we enter an agreement, we either give up our position and come out as second or third in line to collect our debt or when we give up something to an authority we end up paying such as the two million last year to Penn Star Bank several years ago to American Agligan and many others, such as the street lights, the uh, uh, fire plugs, and I can name three or four others. We always seem to give away our rights. Here again, we're now entering into an agreement for the parking meters. And maybe somebody could tell me how we're coming up with seven or 300 more parking meters that we presently have. We're going up from, what is it, uh, 900 to 1,400 parking meters. Plus, we're raising the fee by 50 cents. Last week, we were told that we would raise approximately $2,800,000 extra by giving these meters to standard parking. Just the fees, the extra hours, and the 1,400 meters would amount to a lot more than that $2,800,000. Once again, it seems we're giving away the store. I hope we get a better explanation this week than what we got last week. There's a lot in this agreement. I guess we're going to have to read it to see what's in it. It doesn't sound kosher, and I hope you'll investigate it a lot more than what the past has presented. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chrissy, nice shirt. Thank you. Well, Frank, the game Sunday, but who's going to take Frank? Who's going to win Sunday, I think? Who's going to win Sunday? Niners. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> no way, Jack. You Ravens fan. These guys, Ravens all the way. Good luck, guys. Good luck, Connor. Thanks, Chris. I'll get Thanks, your 49ers Chris. hat next week, Chris. <laughs> Is there anyone else? Good evening, City Council. My name is Dave Gervasi. I'm a citizen and a resident of the city of Scranton. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Mrs. Evans, may I ask you a few questions? Yes. When, when we borrowed $17 million to buy the streetlights, were you on City Council? No. We borrowed all that money? No, I wasn't. Then I believe there was a, I don't know the number, I don't remember that, but it was multi-millions of dollars of refinancing to do work in the parks. Were you on City Council when that happened? No. I think that was back in 2003 that occurred. I believe you're correct. Were you on city council when the war started between the unions and the administration? No, I was not. Are you aware that we really weren't asking for much and that we ended up getting more than we wanted? Yes, I'm aware. I believe there were three more sets of borrowing. I believe one, you weren't on council at the time, I believe two of them 
One I believe was a refinance and one was a huge borrowing. How did you vote? I voted borrowing? no. You voted no for that borrowing. So now that we have all this debt, oh, wait, one more thing, and I'm just jogging my memory here. When, when you got actively involved, when you became the, the council uh, chairperson, and you got actively involved in budgets, and there was no, I believe for the last eight years, there hasn't been a on-time financial audit of the city, that's correct. And, and, and am I correct in saying that you really know where you are, where you really don't know where you are going into your next budget if you don't have the audit to tell you where you've been? Is that an accurate statement? Yes. And wasn't it you digging last year that found out that the city, I believe it was six or eleven million dollars that no one even knew about, even when the budget came out before you even touched the budget? Is that is that accurate? Yes. So the only question is, why is everybody blaming you for this all of a sudden? I was kind of here, I kind of know a little bit about it, I was very involved in the budgets, analyzing them anyway, and uh, all of a sudden it's your fault for everything. Um, I don't understand why. Well, maybe because it's election time. Maybe. Wasn't it you who got Mr. Lascombe to go out and, and ask the nonprofits for pilot payments? Yes. I believe that was true. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else? Mrs. Craig? 5A motions. Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Yes, thank you. Um, first, uh, the Pell meeting on Monday, uh, we discussed the, um, an update of the uh, recovery plan and took a look at the different changes that were made in the aspects of the recovery plan and uh, Mr. Cross said that um, they would be providing a um, an update to council uh, within the near very near future so that we can see where we're at and um, any recommendations that Pell may have. I also noticed that we received a letter from Pell stating that uh, they would they were extending the time for the amended uh, amendments to the the amendment to the plan. It was in our mail today that uh, oh, I didn't see it. They uh, well, let me see. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it, it stated that the coordinator shall provide to the governing bodies an amendment to this August 24th revised recovery plan that will meet the provisions of Act 133. Uh, they, were sp they had said that this would be done by January 31st, um, 2013, due to some that they want to use the actual, fi the final 2012 expenditure information from the city, and that was not available to them as of yet, that they are extending that. Uh, that they will provide that amendment by March 31st, 2013. So basically, I guess it's the same thing that they, uh, the Pell intends to give us an update um, on the recovery plan um, by, by the 31st of March. Uh, also, we d at the time, we discussed the uh, rental registration and at the, re not necessarily at the request of one person, but uh, um, a, a little bit of an update on the rental registration. Uh, the database is being increased daily. Uh, they had tried to contact the sewer authority for information from them. That was not forthcoming um, for some reason. And they, the people in charge were then going to go to the um, garbage bills from the city to try and increase that, but the most effective thing that they found so far has been the housing inspectors as they are out on a daily basis uh, reporting properties back to uh, the rental registration coordinator and that those are being added um, regularly and as soon as a property is identified, uh, notices are being sent to them. So. Uh, notices are being sent out pretty much on a daily basis as new, uh, new properties are identified. Uh, also, uh, the 
second position in the rental registration program has been filled. It was, uh, it was, that position was filled as of this past Monday, so that there are now two people working on rental registration, which hopefully will improve the operation of it. Uh, the other thing that they are looking at doing is hopefully at some point in time using the assessment, Lackawanna County assessment to provide a mass mailing. Um, that would be something that would have to come before us because of the cost that might be involved in it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something that is being considered. And the final two things on rental registration, collections from August of 2012 to December of 2012 were somewhere a little over $100,000. So the, the program, if, if we can base 2013 on the short period of 2012, I, I would think that the projections that we have made for uh, revenue projections that we have made um, have the, you know, a good potential to be realized in 2013. And hopefully um, we can do that. And if, I would say that if we can, if those projections are realized and hopefully even more is collected that perhaps, and uh, I know Mr. Rogan has spoken of it before as well, uh, perhaps that that would allow us to also put on more inspectors, mm -hmm. city inspectors, uh, and that should even enhance the program even more a and allow for the dealing not only of re the revenue part of it, but also additional inspectors would help us deal with the blight problem as well. Um, and the last thing, the amended legislation that um, has been asked for, we are still awaiting that. I don't believe that it has been sent to the office as of yet. Uh, it, it, I, I thought that it would have been here last week. And I will check tomorrow and see you know, where that is. Uh, it, I see some quizzical looks. The amendment was simply to remove a phrase uh, dealing with the safety inspections that would make it a little bit um, more controllable. Oops, excuse me. Uh, last thing I'd like to speak on, and I thought I'd do this prior to it being introduced, was the um, section on the mayor's, the legislation on the mayor's salary. Uh, when I, somewhere about four years ago, I suggested this at council and um, was um, attacked, <laughs> for want of a better word. Um, for suggesting it. Um, I thought it was a good idea then. I, I, I believe that it's a good idea now for any number of reasons. Um, I, I do believe that raising it that $30,000 from 50 to 80 is, is perhaps um, too much at once. Uh, what I would like to see, what I would like to see, and I had suggested it uh, when we spoke about this, our graduated increases, a, a salary schedule as such that would, that would provide for a guaranteed raises over the course of the term of the mayor that would reach a perhaps a, a maximum of 80,000 or whatever it might be set at, but that would start at a lower rate, at, at a lower amount so that um, it would perhaps act as an incentive to do a good job that, you know, that raises beyond the, you know, the four years might encourage someone to do a better job as mayor. Um, also, it, the other thing it may, by raising, gradually raising the, the salary of the mayor, it might also act as a deterrent for multi-term mayors that people may look and say, you know, do we want a mayor at $85,000 or do we want a mayor back at an original 65000 or whatever, you know, amount it was set at. Um, it, it may 
you know, somehow act, I'm sorry, act as a little bit of a turn, but um, I don't know how others feel about that, but I, I've looked at some possibilities. I've, you know, considered some things if we're interested in perhaps pursuing something of that nature, we can talk about it um, when it is introduced. <coughs> and that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Rogan, comments or motions? Yes, thank you. Just a few brief comments um, on some issues. Some other issues, then I'll address the two hot topics of the day. Um, first, we saw in the news about the Music Street Bridge. This is very good news that um, eventually, and hopefully soon, it will be back up and running. I know it is a a hindrance to many on the south side and on East Mountain. Um, for those on west side, I did speak to representatives from PennDOT today regarding the Linden Street Bridge. Um, they said that it is it is expected construction is expected to start very shortly. Um, the problems they ran into with this bridge was a little more complex because of the railroad tracks underneath and also with fiber optic cables that were running through that area. But they did say they project that the bridge will be completed by the end of 2013, so the end of this year for the Linden Street Bridge as well. So I think everyone in Westside, myself included, will be ecstatic when that bridge is, is opened again. Um, next, I, this is an issue that Mr. Spragley brought up that I had jotted down to speak about tonight, is property taxes um, to funds of the school district. I know it is a new legislative year, and we Scranton has two brand new state representatives. Um, I know it's been mentioned before, and in the previous legislature, there were proposals out there to completely eliminate property taxes to fund school districts. If that were to happen, the burden would be removed from senior citizens who generally own property, and their children have graduated many sometimes decades or generations ago and it would place the burden of the taxes on the working people people my age who maybe in the short future will have children that are in those school systems and at the same time it would also by reducing the property tax burden for school taxes it would make any future tax increases on the city's end easier to swallow for the taxpayer so with my colleagues' agreement, I would like to send a letter to Representative Haggerty, Representative Flynn, and Senator Blake, um, encouraging them to support the complete elimination for property taxes funding um, school districts. Is that agreeable? That's fine by me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. And uh, so far, Representative Flynn and Representative Haggerty have been uh, very um, eager to talk to, to me. I've spoken to both of them on numerous bases. Uh, many times and they've been great to work with so I just want to compliment them for that. Next on to the two big issues on this week's agenda. The first one being the pay increase for Mayor Doherty. Or I apologize for Mayor Doherty's successor. And I'll basically reiterate what I said in the newspaper this morning. I think everyone agrees that the position of mayor should make more than fifty thousand dollars per year. Do I think right now is the right time to make that raise up to $80,000? Absolutely not. Just a few months ago, we had city employees making minimum wage, and Scranton was on national news because we couldn't pay our bills. And there was, I think, $5,000 left in the city coffers. And just a few months removed from that to consider raising the mayor's salary by $30,000, which is more money than the average Scrantonian makes, is something that I'm not comfortable voting for. Now, I do understand that the mayor's salary hasn't been raised since the year I was born. Not too long ago, but it's been 25 years since the mayor's salary has been increased. So I would be open to a graduated increase. And the one, the one idea that some residents brought up to me that actually would be the best scenario, although I don't know if it would be legal because it would have to be placed into the home rule charter is to have a pay scale based on performance for instance currently the mayor earns fifty thousand dollars a year plus a city vehicle plus gasoline for the city vehicle and plus insurance for the city vehicle and those three items are always left out of the media because those are part of his compensation as well people have proposed a couple extra thousand dollars for passing and adhering to a balanced budget which is something that hasn't happened in the city in a very long time. Also, there were also proposals to um, request to put in there 
increases for things such as services that are provided to the city, not making cuts in services, working to um, eliminate government waste. Now, I think those are excellent ideas. I don't know how practical they are by putting them into legislation. Um, that being said, I will like to speak to all my colleagues, and Mr. McGough had a proposal. I know Mrs. Evans made comments in the paper as well. Um, as the current proposal stands, I will vote no. If we were looking to increase it maybe to $60,000 over the course of four years, 2500 a year, and then take a look at it, revisit it in another four years, um, that I would be willing to consider. But as the proposal stands, I will be voting no. Next, on to the parking um, agreement. This is an issue that I've been wrestling with over the last week. Um, I voted yes last week. Um, I do plan on moving it into for final passage this week, but that does not mean that I have many, many reservations about this piece of legislation. I'm very happy that we will be having a caucus to answer a lot of these questions, and I do want to hear from those of you who had concerns, because I know a lot of good questions were just brought up at this podium that I would like to look at before making a final vote. A couple of my concerns that I do have are I fully support the initial proposal that council, the majority of council wanted a few years back, which is a street smart style system. Where, and I think the best part of this would be if, and we talked about this many times, if I put a dollar in the meter to park for an hour and I left after 15 minutes and Mr. McGough pulled in after me, he would get my 45 minutes. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Under a new system, it can be set to reset, that the meters would reset and set back to zero. So the person, every person that would be pulling in would be paying for their own time. I would prefer to see that happen instead of raising rates across the board. So they are some issues that I do want to talk about um, next week at the caucus um, before making a final decision on that. Um, I'm encouraged to hear Mr. McGough's comments on the rental registration. And I did vote for the rental registration proposal. And I've said all along that I don't believe it's something that should be used as a revenue enhancement, but it should be used as something to combat blight in our neighborhoods. And the idea of having the program being self-sustaining, where if it's bringing in X amount of dollars and we're using that money specifically to fight blight in our neighborhoods, that's what it should be used for. It shouldn't be used as a, a gap fill to balance the budget. Finally, just one citizen's request for tonight. Um, Mrs. Craig, and this, I'll, I'll provide this to you um, after the meeting as well. The lines on Meadow Avenue are in need of repair. Um, they are fading. And that is all. I will have more comments on the agenda items as they come up. Thank you. Thank and you. Councilman Loscombe, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Yes, just briefly. Uh, I was going to wait till uh, the legislation, but I might as well make my comments now. As Mr. Rogan said, the two hot topics <laughs> this evening. Um, so far it appears, I mean, I'm, I'm on the same page as my prior colleagues who spoke here uh, prior to me, Mr. Rogan and Mr. McGough. Um, so I won't repeat a lot of, of what they stated, but uh, we all know that, uh, you know, the mayor's salary is pretty, pretty low at this point. But given these economic times and the, and the condition of our city, to ask for a $30,000 increase right off the bat is, is just beyond, uh, you know, what we can do at this point. Uh, again, I do believe that we should work on something as, as far as an increase, and there's been many ideas passed here, uh, graduated increases or whatever. So I, I will, you know, be happy to, to work with my colleagues and come up to some kind of consensus on what's going to work out best for the future of this city. Um, as far as voting on it, I will, I will vote to introduce it tonight because if we all vote it down tonight, we won't have this conversation. So I will vote to introduce it and then we can, we can work on, on discussing um, the options in the future. And um, as Mr. Rogan stated too, I, I, I believe last week I had a lot of questions on, on the parking agreement. I, I brought, brought some issues out. I will be making an amendment tonight on 6B. Um, but there are still some questions and I'm happy we're going to have a caucus next week. Uh, hopefully we'll have a lot of those questions answered um, because as you know we're, we're all concerned 
we did look at this this issue for the past two years and uh, we just want to make it that is transparent it's going to benefit the public and it's going to benefit the businesses um, so there are some questions we don't want it to detract from the downtown businesses and we don't want to detract people from parking there with, with, with higher increases. So again, there's going to be a number of questions yet, but I will be, uh, you know, putting in an amendment tonight to address some of the financial issues. And then perhaps, you know, in the meantime, we could get some more information together. But that's basically all I have this evening. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Joyce, do you have comments or motions? Yes. I'm very pleased to hear that uh, Mr. Romy Valero will be coming in next week uh, for a public caucus. I have some questions that I would like to see answered uh, regarding um, standard parking and what they intend to do. And I think it's important that the public uh, receives more information as well. Excuse me, I'm still a little bit under the weather. Um, so I'll try to be brief. Secondly, uh, on tonight's agenda, obviously, as everyone knows, there's legislation to raise the salary of the mayor in 2014 from $50,000 a year to $80,000 per year. While I agree that the mayor's salary should be raised for the next mayor, I do not think it should be as high as $80,000. Tonight, I'll vote to introduce this legislation only. After, I would like to see this legislation amended to lower the raise. I did some research to see what mayors in other cities comparable to Scranton size are making. Currently, the salary of the Scranton mayor is the lowest. For instance, the mayor of Allentown earns $95,000 a year. The mayor of Bethlehem earns $90,500 per year. Easton its mayor earns $80,000 per year. Erie's mayor earns $65,000 per year. Harrisburg's mayor earns $80,000 per year. Lancaster's mayor earns $77,932 per year. The mayor of Reading earns $72,600 per year. The mayor of Wilkes-Barre earns $79,911 per year. And the mayor of York earns $75,000 per year. As we all know, the mayor of Scranton earns $50,000 per year. Looking at the 10 cities I just mentioned, Scranton has the lowest paying mayor's salary by far. The next closest in regard to the mayor's salary is Erie, where the mayor earns $65,000 per year. I firmly believe that the next mayor coming in should earn no more than that given the situation uh, than that given the situation that Scranton faces. In fact, I believe that $60,000 per year is appropriate. A raise to $60,000 would still put the salary of the next mayor as the lowest salary out of the 10 cities that I just mentioned. Furthermore, the salary of the mayor who is the leader of the city would still be lower than each of the county commissioners and the leader of the Scranton School District who nearly earns $140,000 per year. As the leader of the city, the next mayor faces many unique challenges that other mayors will not have to face. Much work will be needed from our next mayor. With the state that the city is in, I do not see a raise of $30,000 as appropriate. However, I do think that some raise in salary for the next mayor is warranted. On other uh, news, Scranton City Council has been forwarded uh, some information that proposals will be opened on February 26th for insurance coverages for the period of April 1st, 2013 through March 31st, 2014. Once more information is known on the potential bidders, I'll further inform the public. Secondly, or actually fourth, <laughs> a meeting will be held next week that I'll be attending with Rossi and Rossi as well as other appropriate administration and authority parties to review the timetable that must be adhered to for the timely delivery of the 2012 audit. As one knows, the annual audit has been historically late over the past number of years, and this year I'm hoping for that trend to change. And I do have uh, a number of citizens' requests 
Number one, several South Scranton residents have contacted me regarding the condition of the road at the intersection of South Webster and Ripple Street. The road is in very poor shape as there are numerous cracks and potholes in the road making conditions difficult. Mrs. Craig, please contact Director Dewar and ask him to handle this situation in the best way that he sees fit. Also, South Scranton residents have informed me that the patch of the road at the top of the 600 block of Breck Street is in very poor shape as there are many cracks making uh, travel conditions difficult. Mrs. Craig, if you could please add this to the list of concerns to uh, contact Director Dewar about. Uh, Hill Section residents have informed me that the 200 block of Wheeler Avenue is in poor shape as there are potholes throughout the whole block which is making travel conditions difficult for residents. In fact, one resident had informed me that over um, the course of one week, uh, he hit a pothole so many times that his tire uh, went flat. So Mrs. Craig, if you could please add this to the list of concerns uh, for Director Dewar. Also, uh, residents of the Hill section have informed me that the home located at 217 Harrison Avenue is in poor shape to say the least. Upon visiting the site, I was welcomed by debris all over the yard, which included numerous uh, busted bottles and other rubbish. The home also had busted windows. Residents have informed me that this home has become an eyesore to the community and they'd like to see something done about it. Mrs. Craig, with this in mind, Please contact Director Seitzinger and ask him to send out an inspector, hopefully to rectify this situation as um, residents would like to see something done as soon as possible. And that's it for tonight. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. First, I wish to thank Mr. Tom Welby for operating the ECTV cameras and making this live broadcast possible. Including, included in tonight's agenda in fifth order for introduction is legislation to increase the annual salary of the mayor of the city of Scranton from $50,000 to $80,000 effective January 1st, 2014. At Mayor Doherty's request, the city's legal department drafted this legislation and submitted it to the Office of City Council just yesterday. The mayor also determined the dollar amount of the pay increase. According to the Home Rule Charter, Article 13, Section 1304, and I quote, compensation to be paid to elected officials holding the positions of mayor, councilperson, and controller shall be established by the City Council no later than February 1st of the year in which an election will be held to fill any or all of these positions for a full four-year term." End quote. Because tomorrow is the deadline set by the Charter for establishment of the pay increase, both Mrs. Craik and Solicitor Hughes researched prior legislation to learn the process that had been followed. Salaries for all of these elected positions were previously increased in 1987 following adoption by City Council on February 11th and signed approval by Mayor Wenzel on February 17th. In 1999, the salary of the City Controller was increased to its current level after adoption by City Council on February 8th and signed approval by Mayor Connors on February 18th. Thus, it appears that precedents were set in 1987 and 1999 to exceed the Charter's deadline. As a result, the current legislation will undergo three traditional readings if it succeeds in passing introduction tonight. Like my honorable colleagues, I do believe that the salary for a Scranton mayor should be increased. However, I cannot agree to a $30,000 raise at this time while our city faces additional borrowing to comply with the Supreme Court award for police and fire and must cover the costs of a defeated commuter tax. 
In addition, the panel of judges who decided against the commuter tax in December were concerned by the proposed raises to six city employees totaling approximately $70,000. Consequently, it does not appear likely that a $30,000 salary hike would meet with the approval of judges in the future. I do hope that when our city has achieved the goals of the revised recovery plan and has returned to sound financial footing, the salary of a Scranton mayor will become commensurate with his or her colleagues throughout comparable Pennsylvania municipalities. In the meantime, however, I am open to discussion among my colleagues as to how best to increase a mayor's salary. Perhaps council might consider an annual percentage increase equal to the percentage received by city employees, or a set dollar figure that is paid annually throughout the next four years, such as perhaps a $5,000 annual increase over a four-year period up to a ceiling of $70,000. I ask all council members to keep in mind that amendments are not made during fifth order introduction. Rather, they can be made only during sixth or seventh orders. Should you vote no to introduction tonight, then no salary increase will occur. If you sincerely wish to raise a mayor's salary by any dollar amount, you must vote yes for introduction tonight. Also on tonight's agenda for fifth order introduction is an ordinance to amend file of council number 100 of 2009, which establishes parking meter rates, meter zones, and hours of operation. It provides for two hour meters at the rate of $1 per hour in designated blocks of the downtown and areas surrounding city hospitals as well as 10 hour meters at the rate of $1.50 in other designated blocks. In addition, parking meters will be operational between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. with the exception of Sundays. The rate increase and time extension will provide for much needed increased revenue for the city to meet its financial obligations. Without such changes, Scranton homeowners would be faced with larger property tax increases. I live in Scranton. I pay property taxes, among others. Admittedly, I don't travel to the downtown on a daily basis. But I would rather pay a higher parking meter rate for my occasional trips to the downtown than see my property taxes rise. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, the city is on the hook for $100 million in past parking authority debt. Monies raised from the parking garages and meters will be used to make these debt payments. If insufficient funds are realized, the burden then falls squarely on the shoulders of the taxpayers. Furthermore, during the recent commuter tax hearing, we learned that twice as many commuters work in the downtown as Scranton residents. Therefore, the parking meter rate increase will be fairly shared by all who work in downtown Scranton. Uh, next, please request on behalf of Scranton City Council a revenue report from the business administrator for the month of January and each month thereafter. It's important to determine areas of strength and weakness and to detect any problems as they occur in order that they can be addressed promptly. Finally, I have two citizens' requests for the week. A city resident reports that a structure located at 131 Morris Avenue 
has been condemned for four years and poses a safety and fire hazard, particularly to children playing in the neighborhood. Windows are open or missing, causing water damage to the structure. The property must be secured immediately before someone is injured. Thereafter, it should be included in the city's 2013 demolition program. Residents of Lake Scranton Road are requesting that council contact the Harrisburg Office of DEP regarding the visual soil testing performed by the regional office. Also, they state that our drinking water supply may be compromised by the proximity of the junkyard and they ask council to request MTBE water tests of American Water Company. Mrs. Craig, please send a letter of request to AWS. And I believe that's it. Just one quick addition. I've just been informed that Mr. Charlie Newcomb is now working our cameras. We thank Mr. Welby for being here earlier, and we thank Mr. Newcomb for assisting us as well. And that's it. 5B, amending file of council number 100-2009, an ordinance amending file of council number 91-2002, an ordinance as amended providing for the establishment of parking meter zones within the city of Scranton establishing hours of operation, providing for the installation of meters and parking meter rates, authorizing the enforcement of parking ordinances, and providing penalties for violations thereof by amending sections 3A. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes, on the question. Um, I talked earlier on item 6B, and. 6B and 5B are very connected. Um, I stated I would vote to move 6B along. I will do the same for item 5B um, until after the point we have a caucus. And since they are so closely related, once we get that information, um, then I'll make a final decision on this item as well. Is there anyone else? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C. Uh, amending file of council number 31 of 1987 section 2 by increasing the salary of the mayor to $80,000 annually with said salary increase effective January 1st 2014 at this time I'll entertain a motion that item 5c be introduced into its proper committee so moved second on the question yes uh, and I'm not going to do this as a, a motion tonight. Uh, it's just something that I said before that I believe this is something that maybe we can do to look at a salary increase, but not one that is a large one over one year. I, I suggested the idea of a salary schedule. And what I meant by that was that something that also Mrs. Evans uh, mentioned, um, gradual increases through the course of the terms of the mayor. Uh, I put together one that started with year one at $60,000. Year two would 65, year three at 70, year four at 75,000. Uh, if, if you're thinking that would start in 2000, if we were to do something like that, it would start in 2014 and it wouldn't be until 2017 they were looking at a salary of $75,000. <clears> um, after that, I would suggest a 2% increase per year for the remainder of the salary, or remainder of the terms or the, the second terms of the mayor or third terms up to a maximum of $85,000. Um, and again, we're looking at those increases not until we get into you know, 2020, uh, or, you know, that would even get close to that amount. Um, and that that would renew at year one at $60,000 with the election or appointment of each new person to the office of mayor. And, and, and so that we weren't always looking at a salary of 80000 that it would go back to, you know, year one 
and an increase for each subsequent mayor. Now that, you know, with inflation and other things we could, you know, look at, or future councils could look at changing those numbers, but I, I think it's a way of increasing the salary of the mayor without doing it in one large amount. Uh, just something that we can, that I think we can consider. And as I said, I'm not going to do that as a motion now. It, it's something that we can possibly talk about and look at at future readings. Yes. And that's I, all I have. Thank you. I s indicated earlier that we, we cannot amend during introduction. The amendments must come, well, ideally during seventh order, but we have amended during sixth order as mm -hmm. well. So, uh, you know, I'd like to consider what my colleague has said. I'm considering what Mr. Rogan stated in the paper, a, sixth, a raise to $60,000 flat. Um, I think if we're looking at, um, for example, the uh, raises of workers, um, the highest raises would amount to 5.2% annually, those being for police and fire. Um, that may be a consideration to raise the salary of the mayor 5.2% um, for 2014, 2015. In other words, following along in line with what's been established for city workers. Um, you know, on the other hand, we might also consider um, as I was saying earlier, which is very similar to what you were saying, um, Councilman McGough, $5,000 annual increases, even if it began at 55000 and worked its way up to 75000 over a four-year period, thereby um, costing only $5,000 per year. Um, but I think it's very important to note that if we sit here tonight and just say no, and I, I know I don't agree with the $80,000. Mr. McGough has said he doesn't agree. Mr. Rogan has said he doesn't agree. Um, Mr. Joyce, do you agree? No. Mr. Loscombe, no. There is no agreement on council to provide a $30,000 increase in one year. But if we were all to cast our votes tonight in the negative, in other words, if each one of us tonight says no, because each one of us believes $80,000 is wrong and it's not happening, then the legislation dies and there will be no raise. So I think it's important to remember that if you sincerely are interested in raising the salary and gaining a consensus on council, that you must approve the legislation for introduction tonight. And thereafter, you've provided yourself and your colleagues with the opportunity to amend in a reasonable fashion. Is there anyone else on the question? Yes. Um, as I stated before, I won't vote for it in its current form. It can be shot down and put back on the agenda. The legislation is one and a quarter pages. All that would need to be changed is the dollar amount um, once it's agreed upon. Um, as I stated in the paper and, and earlier, I believe that $60,000 is, is a fair raise. It's actually even a little bit more than I'm comfortable with giving. But another thing that can be negotiated, and I don't know if anyone feels this way, but the mayor does receive a city vehicle, city fuel, and city insurance. That could be negotiated as well, whereas the salary increase may be a little bit more, and the perk of having a city vehicle would be taken away. So that's also something mm -hmm. that we could discuss as well. And I think it's important to remember as well that the mayor receives um, full health care, and if he serves long enough or has served in other offices, for example, tax collector or remains as mayor for three terms, 
will qualify for a pension. So these are additional circumstances that merit, I think, our consideration. As for voting it down and placing um, new legislation on next week, I don't believe that that's possible in that once something is defeated, and it would have been defeated by all of us, it cannot be raised again for a period of a year. So uh, is there anyone else on the question? By the Home Rule Charter, does it have to be done by the end of the month as far as the legislation? Well, I addressed that under motions, that we have precedents set in 1987 and 1999, and um, the legislation was adopted in both cases um, well past the February 1st deadline and signed by uh, Mayor Wenzel and Mayor Connors well past the deadline. But I mean, if, if say we were to vote it down, could it actually be placed on the agenda after February 1st? I understand that it could be adopted. Oh, but you mean? In its full form, but I mean, is there a, a, a set deadline that it has to be introduced before February 1st? Yes, it has, that's it. it has to so. be. What they're saying is council has to establish this yeah. by February 1st. So, um, I think by voting no tonight, it kills any sincere attempt to make a change. I would just want to make one final point that I forgot to mention, and we all mentioned that the mayor's salary for the responsibility is very low, and I forgot to mention it. And one big thing is when you get involved with public service, you shouldn't be in it for a paycheck. You don't sign up to be mayor of Scranton to work. 80 or 100 hours a week and collect hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're doing it for the love of your city, and that's why it should be done. Same thing with being on city council. City council is a part-time paid position, but as we know, there is no part-time position when your phone goes off at 11 o'clock at night when you have a request from a citizen. You have to take the call, call them back, and I think that's something that we also have to consider, that it shouldn't be comparable to the private sector because this isn't the private sector. And in the private sector, people are compensated on how much money they bring into a company, things of that nature. In the public sector, we're not here to make a profit. The goal is to help the community. And that shouldn't be, money shouldn't be the thing that's driving people to run for mayor. We already have a few candidates in the, the mayoral race. Who knows, there may even be more before the salary was even being discussed being increased. So that's just one point I forgot to, to mention earlier. All those in favor of introductions signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved, thankfully. Uh, Mrs. Craig, back to you. Okay. 6A, reading by title, file of council number four, 2013, in ordinance, establishing a no parking zone along the easterly side of West Market Street, State Route 6011, from Brick Avenue to Rockwell Avenue to allow for safe site distance for a proposed driveway by Noons Market for property located at 416 West Market Street. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6B, reading by title, file of council number 5, 2013, in ordinance, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials to enter into a management agreement with Standard Parking Corporation to administer and manage the city's on-street parking meter operation, procure on-street parking meter equipment, enforce violations of city on-street parking meter ordinance, employ personnel to administer and enforce the city's on-street metered parking operation, prepare and deliver to the city a budget every year for city approval, deposit gross receipts from monies collected and earned by Standard into a federally insured bank account in exchange for the sum of $10,000 per month for a period of five years 
beginning January 1, 2013 and ending on December 31, 2017. You've heard reading by title. Of item 6B, what is your pleasure? I would like to make a motion to amend item 6B per the following amendments. File of Council number 5, 2013 shall be amended as follows. The following shall be inserted as the fifth whereas clause to the ordinance. Whereas the management agreement, Exhibit A, shall be amended to add the following as Article 32. Yearly revenue meeting in Article 32 authority shall be renumbered as 33. And Article 33 counterparts shall be renumbered as 34. Article 32 yearly review meeting. The governing body of the city, mayor and council, and the operator shall meet in the January following each calendar year of the agreement to review and analyze the previous year's operating expenses and gross receipts and net profits and discuss <coughs> developments in parking meter technology that would be applicable to upgrade the parking meters and whether the pur purchase of that technology would be economically feasible. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of council number three, 2013, amending file of council number 56, number three, 2000. This is great. We <laughs> we have to return to 6B. We did pass the amendment. My apologies. But we did not pass Thank you. The legislation through. I'm sorry. Mrs. Chairman, I move that item 6B is amended. Pass reading by title. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. <laughs> Seventh Order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of Council Number 3, 2013, amending file of Council Number 56, 2011, an ordinance entitled General Operating Budget 2012 by transferring $692.22 from account number 01051-0005142201, licensing permits and inspections, professional <coughs> services, to account number 01051-0005141401, licensing permits and inspections mileage slash uniform allowance to provide funding for mileage reimbursement to inspectors. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. McCall? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loskin? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, resolution number 7, 2013, accepting the recommendation of the Historical Architecture Review Board, HARB, and approving the Certificate of Appropriateness for Pocono Sign and Graphic, 1147 The Hideout, Lake Ariel, Pennsylvania, for removal of existing signage located on left side facade, replaced with new signage of the same dimension slash color scheme, and changed business name on existing awning to match dimensions of 10 inches high by 7 feet wide at 414 Spruce Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question, roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. Before I ask for adjournment, I just have two very quick items that I neglected earlier. Um, Mrs. Craig, please, a second request to Mr. Seitzinger regarding the information concerning the housing inspection in Pinebrook in February. Uh, I'm disappointed that we have not received a response. 
uh, nor has the Pine Brook Neighborhood Association. I have heard, you know, that uh, oftentimes when these requests are being discussed by department heads, the responses have been, well, I didn't get a raise. Meaning, well, it's up to your interpretation, ladies and gentlemen. That's not sufficient where I'm concerned. I expect the job will be done, regardless of whether or not you received a raise. So I would like this answer prior to next week's meeting, please. And also, Ms. Carrera gave me um, several letters to department heads and wanted to know what I'd like done. We're going to follow up on them, please, Ms. Carrera. Send it out again. And if need be, we'll remind them that I didn't get a raise is not the correct answer to I'm ignoring the taxpayers of Scranton. Um, yes. We just received a new shipment of smoke alarms. I've been informed by uh, Mr. Gervasi. And anyone interested in having those alarms installed in their homes should go to the city website. Uh, I believe it's www.scrantonpa.gov. And you will find uh, assistance in contacting the, the fire department. I know they do a wonderful job. I received uh, a few of my own. They were installed, and uh, I'll tell you, I feel much safer. I'm very happy, and I appreciate that very, very much. And I ask all city residents who do not have smoke detectors, please take advantage of this program. It's absolutely free of charge. If there's no further business, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. How it works next.